All right, let's go ahead and get started. Once again, my name is Keith Whalen from RPI Consultants. Uh, thank you for taking the time to attend this webinar on strategic sourcing. Uh, with us presenting today, we have Ms. Stephanie Kowal, our Supply Chain Practice Manager. Very excited. Uh, very excited I get to sit in on this webinar and be an audience member. She's invited me, so I get to learn about strategic sourcing with all of you. And we go ahead and get started here, and I'll, uh, I'll grab this seat right here. Excellent. Prime audience participation. Oh, and I think I get to do um, the About Us slide. Uh, trying to think of something uh, uh, <laughs> unique to say. I mean, we're lots of professional services. You've heard the CC Consultants a million plus times. And uh, this is a picture I particularly like from last year. I think we took it with Stephanie's, Stephanie's camera after a series of webinars uh, last May. So um, hopefully we'll take a picture of ourselves here at some point yeah, too. Yeah, that's so. a good idea. Yeah, there you go. It's a good idea. So welcome everyone. Um, here's today's agenda of what we're gonna be going through. Um, we'd like to paint a picture and, and give you a, a nice view into what strategic sourcing has to offer, uh, what kind of features it has available uh, give you some implementation considerations, uh, and also um, show you how it, it can integrate with contract management, as well as S3, your, your uh, portal for uh, financials and supply chain. So with that, let's get started. Um, so you can manage your bid requests. So strategic sourcing allows you the ability to um, build whatever type of event uh, that you wish. So you can build uh, RFPs, requests for proposals, RFQs, any type of uh, uh, bid event that you would need to add, you can basically customize that as you wish. Um, so from there, um, you create automated online um, requests, basically. So mm -hmm. you, you post this event and your suppliers can answer that event online. Um, all of this can tie to um, any kind of categorization standards that you, you may be using today. Um, so a lot of you may be using unspec codes. Um, you can build those categories into uh, the bid event so that suppliers that are associating with that category are alerted that a new event is available for them to um, answer to. Uh, you also can tie these events to activities or assets. Um, so this is really helpful, um, you know, if, if the request originally comes from a requester and, and ultimately uh, whoever ends up winning that event, um, you know, a, a new contract or purchase order agreement is going to need to be created. So why not just carry that information over from the requisition itself? Uh, so that can be really, really helpful. Um, and you also can set up some reverse auctions. So basically, you know, you have that, um, uh, that dollar amount that you're, they need to at least meet that. Um, so you can kind of um, build some supplier competition out there. Nice. Uh, and then here's just a, a nice little simple snapshot of um, what creating the event document looks like. It's a little bit blurry, I'm sure, looking at us presenting it. <laughs> um, but strategic sourcing is a, a landmark application and you, you use a, a rich client um, uh, to build this information in the system. Okay, so supplier notification. So um, this is also very helpful. So like I was mentioning uh, in the previous slide, you can uh, associate events with those um, commodities. Um, so from there, uh, the system can automatically notify um, throughout that process. So there's multiple different types of notifications. Uh, one, you know, right when the event is released out, um, you know, your suppliers can be notified at that point. Um, if you've amended that event, um, if uh, an award was made and you want to notify the suppliers that didn't win and the one that won, um, you know, uh, it just helps to automate that process without uh, a user having to type all that up themselves. Yes. So it can help standardize that communication so it's uh, consistent for each event. Um, so that's really, really helpful. Uh, and then it gives you the ability to view those open events. So, um, you know, you posted it out there and you've had a bunch of suppliers answer you. Uh, now you have to manage all that information, right? So um, today you may have all of that through paper process uh, where you're having them print it all out for you and mail it. And then, um, you know, 
you need to hand it off throughout your organization. So uh, strategic sourcing makes it very easy to you know, pull all that information together so that um, you know, anyone throughout the process can just go log into strategic sourcing, view that bid, uh, and see all the responses from that. So very helpful. Uh, and then once you get all those responses, you have to uh, analyze the information, right? So, um, you know, it, it makes it very easy to open that view up, which I'm gonna show you in a, um, a little bit here, um, to see all those responses side by side so you can have a really good comparison there right at your fingertips. Um, and strategic sourcing also allows you the opportunity to um, uh, weigh your suppliers as well as um, the event uh, responses. Um, so there's some pre-made, um, pre-built weight criteria. Um, you know, did they uh, meet a certain price? Um, mm -hmm. What was their uh, delivery promise and, and did they meet it? Um, are you looking um, to have a, a certain uh, supplier that meets a diversity criteria. You're looking for if they're veteran owned, you want to, um, you know, have that be weighed a little bit higher uh, so that when you're viewing these bids, um, you can see which supplier may be a better choice right off the bat without you having to go through all the, the details of the response. Um, you also can ask questions, uh, so whether or not they're, they're certified, and these are all custom made by you as an organization, you probably already have a, a list of these questions in a, a Word document uh, that you're, you're using today, and those can be brought right into the system. Uh, and then you can build your own, so those are, are what are considered buyer defined. So really, really helpful. Uh, and then here's just a, a snapshot of what that looks like. Uh, and how you're, um, how you're using uh, those criteria to, to weigh um, how you're basically grading that supplier. And then as part of the event, how the buyer um, chose to uh, grade. And then again, kind of a small screen print here. It's hard to see some of these, I apologize. But um, basically for this one event, you can see right at the bid responses, there's a three in parentheses. So there I know, well, I've gotten three responses so far. I see when it's been open. Uh, and then from there, um, I can double click on that and then see all of the responses here. Um, so really, really helpful. I can see if they answered my questions. Um, I can see how, um, the system has um, you know, made its own assumptions on that way criteria to um, grade that response already. So really, really helpful. Um, and then from there, of course, you can award one of those suppliers. Yay, they won. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, strategic sourcing allows the ability to uh, define some reason codes uh, for those awards. So that's really helpful because it assists in the notification that goes out to the suppliers, um, as well as categorizing that award. So, um, you know, uh, why is it that they, they won that, that bid? Um, was it because of pricing? Was it because they had the best delivery? Um, so automating that process and, and building it all in um, can be really, really helpful. Um, and then those codes can also help in automatically creating a, a agreement after that award or um, a purchase order from there. And here we have um, just a snapshot of what event processing can look like. So, um, so you can use strategic sourcing out of the box just to help you manage those bid responses but you really can take it one step further. So you have a requester and they know they're looking for a service, um, but they, they don't know who to go to. They don't know if you know, um, your organization has a, a set list yeah. of suppliers. Relationships with certain service providers like Lawson awesome Partners. Exactly. Um, or you know, if maybe the person that they're used to going to is no longer out there. Um, so, so they can utilize Requisition Center um, to make that request. Uh, and using PO23, your um, buyer can choose to make an a event from that, to request an event. Uh, and from there, we'll go into strategic sourcing for you to pick up from there. So you're gonna create your event, 
uh, add your terms and conditions, what kind of questions, are there any um, attachments that you need to associate that your supplier would want to see. Um, and from there, um, you know, any amendments that you need to make, uh, you know, if the supplier has questions, um, that can go to like a, a Q&A for, forum so other suppliers can benefit from the answers. Um, and when the buyer response, uh, responds, it all posts there as well. Um, and then from there, you're going to evaluate those responses, as we noted before. Uh, and after that, hopefully you end up making some sort of procurement document. So whether that's a purchase order, agreement, or a, a contract. If you're utilizing contract management, you can build uh, a contract from that award. Uh, and you also can create an award from a contract that's uh, due to expire and needs to be renewed. So I think you know this is sort of the real big distinguishing thing for me because as, a, as an Infor partner, we often uh, participate in this bid process. And in public sector, we see a lot of use of uh, third-party systems uh, to manage these bids uh, with different levels of clunkiness from our perspective. Uh, but obviously here, what, what this has given you is integration all the way from the requisition where you can sort of deploy this to strategic requesters uh, to when it's awarded to have that information come back in. So I think you know, that's what makes really strategic uh, sourcing a unique proposition for loss and customers is the integration. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so here we just have a high level overview of, of this process. Um, so really you're, you're creating that, that bid event, determining what type of, of event it's going to be. Um, then you, are, uh, you can view all those events and their responses and, and see any kind of history, any kind of audit trail is uh, very easily uh, viewed within strategic sourcing. Um, you can uh, manage all the supplier's information, um, and you also from there can uh, award and, and create responses back to your suppliers. Uh, so another exciting part of the uh, SRM bundle, which is uh, strategic sourcing contract management, there's also supplier portal, um, which should not be forgotten. Very, very, very helpful. So supplier portal is a, is a way um, for your organization, uh, you're creating these events, how are you notifying uh, your suppliers, right? Um, you know, you can do that through, through email like you're doing today. You don't necessarily need um, to use supplier portal if you're using strategic sourcing, but you really want to. Mm -hmm. uh, it can really, really help that process um, uh, and um, kind of hold your suppliers accountable for their end of the process, manage their own, um, you know, uh, certifications, any kind of questions you may have. They can update their own company information if things have changed, uh, and they can submit their bids back to you electronically. So if you send it to them via email, you really want to give them a link to go into supplier portal so they can answer yeah. the bid there, and you don't end up having one of your buyers or, or, or someone in your um, strategic sourcing team to have to enter this themselves into the event. But you can, if you so choose to, mm -hmm. but let's enable the supplier. And to, the suppliers to work. will be happy to do it. I, I, you know, this seems kind of small this year, allow suppliers to maintain company information. But again, as a vendor, I'm usually on the other side. And I see a lot of this where uh, this is done via email. Hey, it's that time of year, let's update. And sometimes emails get sent with uh, <clears throat> myself and a thousand other vendors. I remember on one of them, you know, somebody replied all, <laughs> which, you know, it's kind of sad. And then somebody else had an out of office and it went berserk. I got 250 emails in the span of five minutes uh, out of office. And you know, I, not a big deal, but it just seems more natural to just give us a place to update than to do these things manually. Yeah, so. absolutely. And um, <clears throat> what I think is really helpful as, as part of this SRM uh, bundle, um, you know, contract management and strategic sourcing are using the same supplier database mm -hmm. that you're building. And uh, M4 um, allows the ability to credential through VendorMate. Um, so I'm not sure how widely this is used in like mm -hmm. public sector, but I know for, for healthcare, it's, it's heavily used across Vendor organizations. Is, yeah. 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 Um, so um, suppliers can connect their uh, VendorMate account to um, their supplier account. So uh, a lot of that credentialing, keeping the information up to date is already done through VendorMate for them, uh, thankfully, so that it notifies all of their customers that they're registered with. Um, so that really helps um, 
you know, tie together all that information for them. Um, and speaking to uh, that Q&A board um, that we were talking about in an earlier slide, um, here when they're asking the question, they're, again, it's, it's automating how that's being sent uh, to your organization where everyone can benefit from that information, not just the direct buyer or um, you know, a, a event creator that uh, is managing uh, this event. So really helpful. Um, so yeah, Supplier Portal allows them uh, to number one, just register uh, to be a supplier at your organization. Uh, they can respond to events, they can update their information, uh, and they can look up any kind of open contract details if you're using contract management. Um, they can see a lot of information there um, themselves that's waiting for them. Um, and um, here's just another uh, snapshot here of, of them responding to an event through the supplier portal. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, and it's a, a overview of that supplier process. Um, so here they're gonna go to that supplier portal webpage that you've created. Um, they can view any kind of events. Uh, they can choose to, to sign up for those events if you're not automatically uh, assigning the supplier to be a part of it. Um, so this can be really helpful if um, by law you're required to um, post these to your internal area. Mm -hmm. Here you go. Um, they can enter their company information. They can ask any questions. Um, they can input any kind of pricing to respond to that bid. Um, uh, and from there, uh, we'll ask them if they wanted to notify anyone else in their organization, uh, certain other contacts that may be associated to their supplier record, um, and then notify them from there. So some other notable features, uh, we spoke a little bit earlier about reverse auctions. Uh, I find that really helpful. Um, now you said that was like a, like, a, like a requirement of you gotta get under a certain amount. So it's not like a dynamic, like it's going for 100,000, who can do it for 99? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, there's also spend analysis, which can be really helpful. And, and this tool uh, basically will pull purchase order information and invoice information uh, and give that all to you uh, in a nice packaged up uh, chart without you having to pull all that information yourself. So this, again, can be really helpful, um, you know, if, if you're, um, you're looking at, at this event and you have a couple different suppliers that bid, you may want to actually go and see how much you've spent with them in the past 12 months uh, and you know have that be a part of your negotiation see if you can get a better deal um, from there so that can be really really helpful um, there's also uh, things you can do with um, ipa um, that basically come canned out of the box and, and this is uh, to assist with um, sending those emails. Uh, you also can require approvals uh, for event creation. So before you release it to the masses, do you have an approval flow that you wanna go through? Absolutely, To right? just make yeah. sure it's okay. Yeah. Um, and there's also a bid bond verification uh, that can be integrated as well. So um, as part of um, these events, um, you can have the supplier require to put, um, put in their number. Mm -hmm. um, and if they don't have one, it also will, will link to that uh, uh, surety site to um, have them be able to register to get one. Mm -hmm. um, you also can allow them to um, print out a copy and upload that in. Uh, and uh, here it will actually uh, tell you whether or not you got uh, electronic copy or um, whether it was a paper copy. And if you got an electronic copy um, and, and they entered their bill bond, bid bond number, then um, it will let you know if it's been uh, verified. So lots of information at your fingertips. Um, so I really wanted to take some time here to talk about how strategic sourcing integrates uh, with some of these other modules. So like we were talking about earlier, uh, strategic sourcing and contract management can work hand in hand. So if you're using one or the other, um, you know, you already have that set up and structure. So basically the other modules utilize that same structure. So that can be really, really helpful. It doesn't take as long to build one after another because you already have all that detail there. Uh, and that's something to keep in mind too when you're implementing uh, either of these 
these modules um, because you don't just want to think about your one silo yep. process. You want to think ahead. Um, and you know, out of the box, uh, you may see this and think, oh, we're never going to use strategic sourcing. We just want to use contract management or vice versa. But um, you know, even at the, the very basics uh, with strategic sourcing, um, there's a lot of cool stuff that, um, that you can do. Um, so that's kind of how those two relate. Uh, and then for um, strategic sourcing integration with S3, your, your portal, your procurement, your, your financials, um, your sourcing event can do a couple different things. So you can actually create a purchase order right from that awarded event, uh, and that can carry over into PO20 for you, pretty cool. Um, and it also can uh, turn into a vendor agreement, so services, uh, and that will tie right back to your, your system. And these are decisions I can make based on the event and the type of bid, like maybe something that's a little dollar amount, I just want to create a PO. Exactly. Instead of an agreement. And or you as can, a service, you know. Yes, and you can build that standardization, that categorization around your event type. So that's part of the structure that you would, you would build at that very beginning to help default that information in. Great. Um, and then supplier performance. So we talked a little bit about um, the, the weighing functionality. Um, here after um, you know, you've awarded this event, maybe you turned it into a contract, maybe you turned it into a, um, PO. Just a, a PO, what happens after that? You really want to make sure that you're following up to see how that supplier did so that next time you have a new event out there. I mean, that's the real value, right? It's like, yeah. did they deliver? Exactly. Don't want to hire them again. Yeah. So leverage that information for your next event uh, really can help uh, for future selection. So, um, you know, it's also helpful for the supplier to hear that feedback as well. Um, so you have that weighing functionality. Well, strategic sourcing also allows, um, gives you the ability to run some metrics off of that. So um, basically, how many events uh, where they sent invitations to. Out of all of those invitations, how many did they actually respond to? How many lines of that event did they actually bid towards? How many did we award? Um, you know, that type of information can be really, really helpful to have mm -hmm. right there at your fingertips. Uh, and this could be done again at, at the point of each new bid. Uh, you're viewing this information, or may, maybe you have just an annual uh, review process that you're going through. So utilize the information that's in the system, and you don't need to recreate the wheel here and come up with your own. Uh, you can start with what Infor provides you out of the box. Awesome. So some implementation considerations. Um, really leverage that supplier um, portal. It's very, very helpful. Uh, Know that um, you know it's going to take some time to work with your suppliers to to get them on board, um, and and plan for that time. And um, you know if you don't have vendor uh, meet in use at your organization today, um, it's definitely something worth looking into. Um, I am not sure if M4 is looking to have other credentialing um, partnerships. Partnerships. Um, but I know vendor mate is heavily used, so that's mm -hmm. when they went one thread away. Um, and really, don't underestimate the power of um, you know these other integrated modules. So contract management, um, but definitely just your your S3, your portal uh, processes today. So um, I think my favorite thing about strategic sourcing is um, you know the the ability for the requester to request some sort of service, and the buyer has the ability in, in PO23 to just go, hey, I want to create an event from this, and you know. A bid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I want this to um, to be released to a couple different suppliers and, and, and follow that through the process. Um, but really, um, today in S3, yes, you can create a purchase order for that service, um, but you can't create a service agreement, right? Right. So strategic sourcing allows the ability to do that, even to re, if- To almost reroute from the PO process. Exactly. Through strategic sourcing to an agreement. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, and it naturally, that's just how it works. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not necessarily um, 
um, creative. It's, it's nothing uh, new, um, but you have to think a little bit differently about mm -hmm. what, what do we have in place today that does work, but it's missing a couple different steps. Mm -hmm. And wow, we could really use this application to uh, tie that process together. Um, so really with any kind of uh, new uh, product implementation, um, you know, we're, we're really big on those stakeholder workshops, uh, really get everyone in the room that can be involved, you know, not just your, um, your contracting and your strategic sourcing departments, um, you know, it, it's every, everyone from the requester to yeah. the receiver to AP, you know, get everyone in the room and, and talk about a lot of this and, um, you know, see if you can come up with your own standardizations and really leverage the functionality that the application has to offer. Um, and, you know, some of your processes are, they're working. They're already in place. Yep. Um, and strategic sourcing knows that. It's just giving you the ability, wow, you can highly, um, it's not even necessarily customize the application, but it's, it's configured um, in a way that makes it, it's it's flexible to work with every type of organization, yep. um, which is really important. Um, so already having somewhat a, a, of a standard, uh, it's just you know documented. You have some word notifications. You have a couple email addresses. It's just kind of scattered. Uh, so strategic sourcing really helps bring all that together. Um, so a lot of your work may already be done. It's just learning a, a, a new application. Um, and then here's just a, a screenshot, um, like I was talking about earlier, uh, with PO23, here it has that uh, event option. So I believe if, if you're on uh, 10, and this may even be in some later versions of 9, your buyer may see this, but it's just not going to work if you don't have <laughs> yeah, sourcing. sourcing. Yeah. So, um, so I think we have some questions here, and I know the very first one's a very interesting one because it's how do we determine if we have strategic sourcing? So just to... Just to uh, add a little bit to what you were saying earlier, strategic sourcing is part of supplier relationship management, uh, which basically has three general products, which are contract management, strategic sourcing, and vendor portal. It is a landmark application. So this is a separate application from what we know as S3. And so there's two components to that is, is, is it installed <laughs> is the first thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and do you own it, right? And so, I mean, I would probably ask your IT department uh, to see, right? Um, uh, it might be that you own it and uh, and it's not installed. Uh, if you're Cloud Suite, you are likely to own it, though not necessarily. Uh, but if you have contract management, then you definitely have strategic sourcing. Mm -hmm. um, there's another question here on viewing uh, invoice payment info. I know this has long been a, lot, a goal of lots of lost and customers and there'll be several attempts at vendor portal. I do not believe it has that capability currently in supplier portal. Um, so maybe in the future. We'll yeah, have that. there are some. Um, another thing that M4 has done really, really well with these AM landmark applications is um, they already have uh, predefined security roles in place. Mm -hmm. um, so you, as an organization, don't need to structure all that yourself, like you may have um, for some of your supply chain roles. Um, so I believe that there is some invoice payment detail oh, there on is. there. Um, I just don't necessarily think it's uh, a part of um, strategic sourcing. Um, you, well, the supplier portal is, is what they're, you know. It's agreed. Like, can I, as a vendor, see? It's just not, um, it's not really talked about gotcha. as it relates to strategic sourcing. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but yes, I, I believe that there is some invoice detail in there. You would just have to give the requester um, uh, not requester. You'd have to give the supplier that access to see that detail. So, um, at the very beginning, if you were to implement strategic, uh, strategic sourcing and supplier portal, um, you could just allow them uh, ability to register and update their company information. You may not even give them access to view any kind of events, and that all depends on uh, what access you're giving that uh, supplier. Uh, Login. So, so let me uh, dovetail in another question. Uh, in your opinion, and everything, everything's going to depend on the organization and also the industry, obviously. I mean, strategic sourcing, uh, just from my experiences, the public sector is going to have a lot, there's a lot more requirements in place. But, uh, you know, put yourself in the shoes of, uh, say, materials director. Do you think that your approach would be, if you didn't have any of these, contract management first, strategic sourcing first? Both at the same time, what, 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 yeah. what's your inkling? So that's a good question. So um, I'd say in healthcare, um, 
you would get a lot of benefit by starting with contract management. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of uh, big wins. Um, allowing specials on those agreements, you really, mm -hmm. uh, all of that busy work that your buyer is doing right mm -hmm. now, uh, you can fix a lot of that with contract management. Um, but at that same point, it's, it's very important that when you're going through that workshop process that those folks from strategic sourcing are are a part of that um, conversation uh, so that when you're building that structure, you're keeping all those things in mind of, you know, okay, we have this contract and it's about to be expired. Well, now it's going to be going to the other team. So, you know, what are th those um, categories that you put in place and does mm -hmm. that still translate well when it's starting to go out for bid? Absolutely. So, and I think this is this is a question that you may, uh, and, and some of your contract management presentations have talked a little bit more, and that's the relationship of the suppliers in this supplier relationship management uh, modules to to the vendor file. Um, how complete does your vendor file need to be uh, to make this work? I mean, if it works as a vendor file, it's it's probably good enough. I mean, it's more about. Uh, having it clean from a, from a vendor file perspective than the data that's in that vendor file, right? Because it uses a, a different master file. Or am I yeah, wrong about that? no, you're right. Um, yeah, we, we didn't talk about that in this presentation, but we, we do get into it in the contract management presentation. So uh, through this uh, SRM bundle, um, vendors are not called vendors. They're called suppliers. Um, and We've been promoted. Yeah. Um, and... M4 is keeping them separate because, uh, especially in the instance of strategic sourcing, not all of your suppliers are going to be vendors in your AP system. That makes you, sense. you may have never done business with them, and you may never do business. Never. With them. Yeah. So um, when you're building those suppliers, you know, after the supplier registers, if you have it start there rather than you know your own team uploading that file of suppliers that you already know are in your system. Um, you associate suppliers to a vendor code if you have one. So um, with that in mind, yes, you'd want to do some sort of uh, vendor um, cleansing um, to your um, AP10 records. Um, and, and really, um, you can focus on just those, um, those vendors that you're doing business with today. So um, you know, even if you just focused on your past 18 months of um, payments, payments History. And, and your agreements that are in place today, um, you can start with that, make sure all that data is clean, uh, and, and then start to um, uh, take it from there when you're making your uh, associations. Great. So it looks like we're um, good on questions. I want to thank uh, Ms. Stephanie Cole for this very informative presentation. I hope you found it as informative as I did.